Real Talk. Ya, buenos días. So, what's up? We are Migos. Today, we have a very... Ayan, ibang level na na talagang Don Corleone style. We have a very special guest today. And today, actually, we wanted to prove now na we're not just a show about politics or economics or policy, but we're also a show about culture and society and also health, no? Medical health and sexual health. And for that, we have a very special guest with, with us today. Can you please introduce yourself? I'm losing my, my voice. Richard A. Darian invited me to this podcast and he doesn't even know me. All right. So I'm Dr. Rika Cruz. I'm a sex and relationships therapist and I'm the CEO and founder of Improved. And I'm also, I also have a show like you. Yes. So I'm also a media, We're what do you call that? Media practitioner. Yes, pundit. I think a yes, yes, congratulations. Yes. Um, uh, it's, it's really a pleasure joining you. Oh, by the way, I have also a co-host here. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's talk about Let's talk about the sex. But before the almost sex, tell us how did you get into what you're doing? Did you feel na there's a vacuum of proper discussion? Do you want sure. the showbiz answer or do you want the real answer? Uh, real. Uh, uh, we we can give the real and then the showbiz and the one. Showbiz we can one. give a link to you later on. <laughs> <laughs> so the showbiz answer, well, it's not really showbiz it's all surreal it's because I love sex right right and uh, I love sex and when I was married to my first husband we weren't having sex like mm. he wasn't having sex with me so I had to ask myself like what the hell is going on like is there something wrong with me why doesn't he want me and ganda ganda ko diba this is 20s? Oh, what? So, <laughs> <laughs> Let me put my Do you want me to walk out? <laughs> We're just starting the no, show. No, no, no. I can't to apologize I to, to my co host. No, no. I want to understand. Para, siempre, depending on your age, you process good, good job. grief differently. Good job That's insulting our guest, Richard. Really? <laughs> oh my God. I'm just asking. <laughs> let, let her finish. Let, let her finish. So yeah, we were together um, uh, for a long time. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I forgive you. Okay. Um, and he wasn't having sex with me. And during that time, I was already taking my MA in psychology. Right. And I needed a topic for my thesis. And because I was going through that, I said, okay, my main question is, how many times should a couple have sex mm. for them to be satisfied in their relationship, mm. for them to be happy? And that's what I pursued. And up until now, I don't have the answer, but I have a PhD in sexology. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there, because it was really, you know, it was really affecting me during that time, also affecting our relationship because I started like questioning myself, mm -hmm. like what's wrong with me? You Am don't I feel not? wanted. I, yes, yeah. I didn't feel wanted. I didn't yeah. feel desired. So yeah. I had to find the answers on my own during that time there wasn't anyone who I can go to. Right. There's Dr. Margarita Holmes, yes, but right. she wasn't uh, in the country during Outside, that yeah. moment. So I had to study sex. But in hindsight, you know, when my friends talk to me, they say that they're not really surprised that I am in this profession, that I'm doing what I'm doing now. Because apparently, um, since I was like in elementary, I've been talking to them about, you know, masturbation, sex. My speech in college was mm. male masturbation, you know, COM3. And I gave out condoms. In high school, I um, talked about contraception. So I, I think it's hey, just Dina, in the pot. There was no backlash, family I'm criticism. Oh, family uh, criticism, of course. Yeah. Um, from the start, uh, I, I started my sexual debut quite young. Because I was wait, are we still in the showbiz answer? Or the yeah, 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 exactly. I started my sexual debut quite young because of you know when you're uh, in your teenage years or when you're going through puberty, you have a lot of questions yeah. and you also start to rebel. So when they found out that I wasn't already what we call now a virgin. Mm. That there was a lot, a lot of backlash. I grew up in a very Catholic family. Yeah. You want to talk about <laughs> that? Because um, you know, some of us, you know, you know, uh, went, you know, dating internationally and mm -hmm. all, and that's where you realize there are huge cultural gaps, right? Yes. The issue of virginity is a non-issue. Yes. In a lot of Western mm -hmm. countries, mm -hmm. or even non-Western mm -hmm. countries, but in the Philippines, 
I think up until today. Up until today. It's, up until it's quite today. an issue, especially at least in my or our generation, millennials. I mm-hmm. remember if, like, parang, this is, this sounds very anachronistic, but it's a big issue, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. and it, sometimes it's kind of passive aggressive, like, oi, maganda si ganon, pero, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, you would hear those banters or something mm-hmm. like that, or, mm-hmm. And and so there's a lot of microaggressions going around that that affects women disproportionately compared to men. It's almost a non-issue mm-hmm. if men were, mm-hmm. you know. So do you want to talk about that? Because I I, I want to know the woman pers- a Filipina woman perspective mm-hmm. on that. Because even as a Filipino man, I felt with lang parang it's it's a unique thing to us, but not necessarily a right thing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what's mm-hmm. going on there? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? What's going on? Um, when the, I the was young, the stigmatization yeah. of uh, yeah. Oh, because yeah. um, for a woman, right, here in our culture, our value and worth is equivalent to the purity, yeah. you know, how chaste you are. Because we feel like, at least for our generation, we're taught that if you have any sexual relations with other people, then you're impure, you're dirty. Like you yeah. shouldn't be. Sh- you sh- shouldn't be sharing your body. You have to be modest, virtuous. The whole Maria, Maria Clara, Clara exactly. narrative. Yeah. But even before you know that Maria Clara narrative, so yeah, let's talk about that. That's not really. That's not really how it is. I want it exactly. to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Especially if you read El Filibusterismo, how it yes. ended for very uh-huh. horrible. Yeah. But it became, we embodied it so much as a culture yeah. that women are patterned towards her. But they really want to get raped and not say anything. Mm-hmm. Like, what the hell? But even, and that's because of the Spanish colonization. Mm-hmm. Before the Spanish colonization, we had our babaylans, Babaylan, yeah. right? And the transgender females are the ones who are um, leading, yeah, yes, yeah. leading the, yeah. the, the society. Yeah. And women actually can have sex with anyone. That's how we were before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, uh, it's okay. You can have sex with your, the, the villagers and then you take care of the kids uh, all together. Right. But when the Spanish came, the the men yeah. um, said that okay, that's that's why are you allowing your your women to do that mm. to be with a lot of people? It, that that's so much power for women. Mm-hmm. So they started to change. In the so there was kind of a polyamory primitive polyamory or something like that yeah that's non-monogamy yeah, yeah it's really non-monogamy and uh, it was I, I would think it was a threat to, to the Spanish men mm. because I mean they, they came here to able- spread Christianity in God's word mm-hmm. so what they see is for them heathens and all of these people I mean I mean for me per- I mean we were part of the Indic cosmopolis mm-hmm. right I mean Manila Nila mm-hmm. as a Sanskrit mm-hmm. word for indigo right so mm-hmm. actually we were animists Hindu, Indic, mm-hmm. we are mm-hmm. very different from, from the Judeo-Christian yes. and of course also Islamic values yes. that will come later on. So mm-hmm. very ingrained. Yeah. But obviously in the mix, yeah, so, I mean, you could see a kind of a yin and yang going on there mm-hmm. that there's this kind of Spanish influence, strict Catholicism of the 16th century, 17th century. But at the same time, I think, and don't put any remnants of you know, Babaylan culture, strong yes. women, matriarchy, whatever you it, want to call it, the, right? It's the push, really. Yes. And <clears throat> Mahira Plang, I think I think you see that uh in our society because the umbrella you see is very patriarchal, right? Yeah. But when you go into the family unit, exactly. who are you afraid of? Your mom or your dad? Yes, yeah. yeah. mom yung uh, or Lola mm-hmm. in our case. Diba? She's the gangster. So, yung, yung term na uh, un, un, under desire, diba? Exactly. Uh-oh. Because yung, yeah. yung women yung usually tawag nga commander sa, right. sa mga bahay, diba? Kasi Pero yung, there's also an injustice there because that shift only happens when a woman gets married mm-hmm. and she starts having kids. That's where the value of a woman levels up mm-hmm. for people. But for a woman who's not married and who's having sex, no, you're still looked down upon. Until now, yeah. Mm. It's, it's still a problem. Galang, di ba? Do you think it's changing na? Parang, uh, gano'ng kabilis yung change nung, nung uh, parang people are more accepting to women having uh, multiple partners or or having premarital sex or... Hmm. Kasi parang medyo sa generation ngayon, parang because of siguro liberal values coming in from the states and hmm. ano. So, mas nagiging open. Mas, uh, hindi na... Yung term nga is slut-shaming eh, di ba? Hmm. Parang... Uh, the generation now they are 
parang ayaw na nila yung ini slut shame ko nyare kasi if mm-hmm. someone sleeps with uh, a lot of guys so mm-hmm. yung shift na yun are you are we seeing that right now first off um there's nothing shameful about being a slut <laughs> <laughs> right so that whole term slut shaming we should actually let it go because you're just shaming the woman right basically And if you say slut shaming, kinahon mo na siya. And there's nothing wrong with it. That that's just us being sexual beings. Now to answer your point, I think well, technology has a lot of um, has a lot to do with it because people are now hearing the narratives of other women. Mm-hmm. You know, there's more advocacy, there's more pushback, and the message spreads like quicker than before. However, you. St- still cannot take away the values and you know the beliefs and principles that we have as a culture mm-hmm. mahirap yon so we cannot just like say no it's okay women can have sex with whoever or it's okay to be a slut or whatever kasi you're not inviting those who are against mm-hmm. it in the conversation Parang what we were talking about kanina, we're just applying Western perspectives right. to the culture without even like thinking of how we live. Yeah. And it's so ing- sex is so ingrained in us. So kailangan talaga feeling ko ah, for me kailangan talaga yung conversations natin mangyari on all fronts. You have those women who are more liberated. Mm-hmm. Yes, sige, talk to them. But now I feel that I'm talking to the choir, preaching to the choir. Mm-hmm. When I talk to them, I'm like, just like, yay, okay, you're out there. Good on you. Mm-hmm. Now, practice safe, responsible sex and have fun. Make sure you're orgasm or at least you're pleasured. Mm-hmm. That's it. The second part is there's still women who are really, really conservative mm-hmm. who can't even talk about it who who feel aghast when they hear me mm. talking on radio on TV right. when i say the word slut when i say the word sex so those are difficult but are we want those to get there. to be provocative or <laughs> just to push the boundaries of discussion or no because what? how are you going to say it destigmatize it uh, it's, what it's, yeah It's the word. It's the word, right? Oh, yeah. It's like it. It's sex. Mm. Even tite or mm. puke. When I say it on air, people start mm. covering their ears. But that is the term. Isn't it? Wala bang ano parang genitals parang more bird. Wala mo na gary act ka. Nagreact ka. Na yung ano eh may ganong law. Oh oh, and we cannot use um. What is that? Is that what you call allegories or metaphors or whatever? Yeah. Because when we do that, you're actually inviting people to more sexual abuse, sexual harassment. Because mm. they can't speak right. out. They can't say or that someone God touched my... Or if something happened, there's yes. no openness to discuss it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're just putting stigma on it. Sugarcoating sex yeah. is actually very dangerous. Mm-hmm. So the next part, dami ko sinasabi. Tama na nga. This is important. Yeah. The next, the, di ba, meron tayong extremes. Uh, Liberated, fine, open, uh, and then the really conservative. conservative ones, we will get there. Um, who we want to talk to are the ones who are right in the middle. And these women are the ones who are, okay, I, growing up, I felt shamed and guilt whenever I do something sexual, but now I want to explore my sexual self. Mm-hmm. I want to know the power that my sexuality or my sexual self can give to me. Not give others, ha? Huh? It's just give to me as a person. Because it's a lot. You can do a lot of things if you can just embrace who you are as a person and it includes your sexual self. So, that means getting rid of sense of guilt and shame not and everything ingrained in us, right? Getting rid, mahirap mm. yon. Eh. Yeah, yeah. But ha, don't, don't be, don't be shameful. Don't feel yeah. guilty anymore. Yeah. But acknowledging that it exists, mm. acknowledging that it can creep in from time to time. So, for example, you want a, you want a concrete example. You're masturbating. A woman is masturbating, starting to masturbate. She feels pleasure, but before she feels pleasure, there are thoughts in her head. Like, Oh, this is dirty. Oh, I cannot touch my body. It's 
it's nakakadire, it's disgusting, it's bad. Mm. They have those thoughts. But when they start to acknowledge it, then we can transition to, okay, now I'm comfortable with my body. Now I can feel pleasure. Mm. I can allow myself to be free. <laughs> may ako do. Oh, hindi, oh, ito, ito, uh, kasi syempre uh, hindi din ako familiar pero sa Filipino woman ba uh, how many ba do you think are open to uh, masturbating and, ah, I did a study on that um, oh, they're, yeah, they sense they're comfortable yeah. with themselves let's okay. just put it that way yeah. um, that's my thesis I did right. uh, data um, on Filipino sexual behaviors and right. how it uh, predicts, associates with um, sexual satisfaction and relationship satisfaction. So in my study, I found out that women masturbate around uh, three, three, three times a month. Once, one to three times a month. So there are women who masturbate one to three times a month. Your question is, how many women we cannot have mm-hmm. that? In sex, we cannot answer accurately or precisely how many people are doing this kind of sexual behavior or this kind of sexual behavior because academically as a researcher it's so hard to get that data people there's right. a social desirability right. bias or people um, over report mm. or under report so yeah because yeah that, that's always a challenge but is the methodologies the studies are they improving over time I'm sure there's always the first right I hope so but are people more <laughs> open because I'm sure it was the same 50 years ago in the US for instance mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. or 100 years ago in Europe mm-hmm. but over time uh, these surveys became more accurate studies became more you know triangulating studies multiple mm-hmm. studies you know what I'm saying like yes. the, the research you're doing is quite pioneering but but over time the whole business becomes that, part of the, the fabric goal. of yeah that's really the goal as an, as an academic as a yeah. researcher my goal is to open up research on not sexuality because in sexuality we have that we have our pioneers mm. for that um, what I what really want to know are the sexual behaviors of Filipinos mm-hmm. and how it relates to their sense sense of self and sense of um, relationships. Kasi ito, ito Doc, um, ako, uh, meron akong mga uh, several partners before. Mm-hmm. And parang, parang... Sabay-sabay ba? Oh. An, an, hindi naman. <laughs> uh, pero minsan nag-overlap. <laughs> joke lang, joke lang. Joke Unintentionally. Lang. <laughs> 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 pero parang ang, ang sense ko is uh, I'm not sure if any one of them uh, would uh, masturbate on their own. Parang nahihiya sila touching themselves. Hindi mo lang alam. Yun nga eh, yun uh, nga eh. Or you're not open enough. Oh, eh, kasi yeah. pag, pag, pag sa guys, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Ay, I, a large percent, percentage of guys. Eh, madami naman talaga. Oh, Kapag pero, sinabi sa yun ng asawa mo ng partner mo na lalaki na hindi siya nag-masturbate, mag-isip-isip ka lang. Oh. <laughs> eh, um, pero yun yun, no? yung sinasabi mo na may mga babae na nahihiya na sabihin na nag-masturbate sila. It's still part of that the shame and guilt and accepting na, okay, this is part of who I am as a person. Pero, pero, ang isa pang layer doon ay, mga lalaki kasi, sorry na, mm. mga Go lalaki ahead. kasi at least Take from, shot. from uh, what I hear, what I know, mm. um, kapag sinabihan sila, ng babae na nagmamasturbate ang babae, there's a tendency to get hurt. There's a tendency... Kasi insufficient ka. Oo, uh, to think uh, about uh, their capabilities yeah. as a sexual partner. Bakit kailangan mo bang magmasturbate eh, nandito naman ako? Bakit kailangan mo pa ng sex toy eh, nandito naman ako? Parang, boy, hindi mo makakaya gawin lahat. Pero yun, how about yun, no? How about for the use of, ano, for the use of sex toys? Dun, dun siguro mas, mm. kung mas maliit yung sa masturbation, yung sa pag-use ng sex toys, siguro mas konti Mas konti, pa. mas konti. Oh. Pero mas nakikita ko na mas open yung mga babae to use tools like toys. Okay. Why? Because they're not using their hands. So they feel that it's it's an inanimate object mm. that's pleasuring them. Kasi kapag kasama yung kamay mo, meron na na narrative na hindi ba hindi mo pwedeng hawakan mm. yung katawan mo. So the, 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 the physical tao. distance gives so psychological meron, meron ganun sa Pilipina. Oh, 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 I, I didn't know that. Eh, oh. ang, you should. No, I'm you just should. <laughs> <laughs> hey, another thing to think about is that for women, mas comfortable sila 
to have men touch their bodies or other people touch their bodies than them touching Where is this coming? Is this the Catholic influence? Is this the... What's going it's on there? It's still that whole... Yeah. Um, if you touch yourself, it's sinful. Parang it, ganun uh, it's uh-huh. dirty. Yeah. dirty. It's dirty. It's not yeah, good. The, yeah. uh, it shouldn't... You're not supposed to have pleasure. Diba? For women, hindi naman pinag-uusapan yung sexual pleasure eh. Ano lang? You're supposed to have sex to have kids and, to have and a family satisfy your, your, your husband, and satisfy your husband and satisfy your husband so the idea of pleasure is always exclusive sa lalaki parang ganun oh, oh. Intended, kasi diba? nangyari rin yun parang mas madali siyang naintindihan for men because most of the time when you ejaculate which you need to procreate mm. you also orgasm for men yeah yeah mm. pero you can orgasm without ejaculating for men so yung understanding natin Correct. it's a different yeah it's uh, a very different dynamic yung understanding the natin ng sex is for them a function yung ejaculation yeah. but for women if they orgasm ano ang function and that's not even just a narrative here in the Philippines it's all over what is the function of the female orgasm because we cannot mm. accept that a lot of people um, cannot accept that it's just for pleasure. Mm-hmm. Kaya hahanapin mo talaga ng kwento. Yeah, that's, the mechanics is quite different. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. for men, it's just ipso facto, right? Yeah. You cannot yeah. procreate if you don't go through the process, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. So, so uh, how did you start? I mean, can you give us a little, like, what was the first service you were giving out? How was the reaction when we were talking? Uh, give me the dirty kitchen. Research? Yeah, the dirty kitchen okay, part. Okay, research Because with, that tells you about people's openness to discuss these things, right? Uh-oh. Which tells us about our culture. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. He's <laughs> trying to get out the question. <laughs> <laughs> I checked my other lap. Uh-huh. Um, uh, yung sa research, when I started, that was around 2013, 2014. Um, Quite recent, yeah. It's so funny. It's so mm. funny. Because during that time, hindi pa naman uso yung Google Form, di ba? Yes, 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 yes. Ang una kong pinuntahan, yung simbahan <laughs> I oh. went to church okay. and was my that dad, intentional like, yeah, provocative it's intentional yeah, yeah. And, and not to provoke yeah. but to understand mm-hmm. we're here not to provoke anyone it's really to understand where they are. So, pumunta ako sa simbahan and my dad kasi, I, I used to be a lector commentator in a church and my dad is like, oh, so you church connections. Yeah, yeah. And then, a Catholic I talk, church or? A Catholic the, church, okay. yes. And then, I talked to the seniors. Diba, may mga group pa sila ng seniors yeah. and, and then he said, labas po tayo, painumin ko kayo, punta kayo sa bahay. I took up wine bottles. Pag naman yung tatay ko, wala na siyang magawa sa akin eh. Pag tapos niya akong tawagin um, nung bata ako, sabi niya, ano na lang iisipin ng mga tao dyan, parang malandika, yung mga yeah. gano'n, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Pero pag tapos niya akong tawagin gano'n, tumayag na siya, wala siya magway. So, <laughs> <laughs> Acceptance. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I invited them over to our house. I, I put out bottles of wine. And then, I started asking them about their sex lives. These mm-hmm. are like 60, 70 right. years old. Sex lives from Male. These are male. Up. No. <laughs> Female. Men and women. Men couples. Men and women. Yeah, couples. Merong couples. Merong uh, old maids. Right. Merong. So I really opened up that conversation with them because I wanted to know how it was like before mm. and how I'll be able to approach it given their lens before and how it's affecting the present during the time and then get data from it. So parang ganun ko siya right. in approach. And then eventually... Yung mga sumasagot naman, mas madaming sumasagot online kasi anonymous. Yes. Uh, but that's quantitative. The qualitative uh, part of it is Focus my group discussion, dissertation. You know, yeah. My dissertation, I had to interview women one-on-one. Yun ang hirap. Kasi during mm. that time, hindi pa, hindi pa talaga pinag-uusapan yung sex. Mahirap umupo. Yeah, in comfort ask, level. Uh, yeah, trust. Ask a stranger... Yeah. Tapos wala pa akong pangalan nun eh. Yeah, like, yeah. who are you? Why yeah, are you yeah, asking yeah. me about? Oh, uh-huh. yeah. And ngayon, I can say that yeah. I can sit and, okay, tell me about your sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kasi you've already built your credence. So noon, medyo mahirap. Ang dami kong kinausap. But eventually, nakaraos naman. And from that, I got the, my theory on sexual pressure. So I did a grounded theory on female sexual pleasure. And I entitled it The Wife, the Mother, and the Stat. Because I found mm. out that when a woman can, can uh, embody 
being a wife, being a mother, and being a slut, all at the same time, they can experience pleasure that is out of this world, that transcends in how they relate to their partners and their husbands and how they take care of their kids. Mm-hmm. So, so it makes them think. Ano po sila sabi? Ano po? 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 Uh, pagkataon nila pagkataon, pagkababae nila self-actualization pagkababae yeah. kasi nai-embrace mo nga kung sino ka so so maraming Pilipina ba or is it uh, hard for them to embrace yung kanilang uh, slutty side mm-hmm. because Bakit? of the cultural <laughs> no, no. Talaga, no, because not, of the not value. sexually oh. comfortable alam mo ang dami ko rin nakakausap mm. na yun parang kasal na sila yeah. tapos hirap sila to have sex merong na masakit para sa kanila painful to have sex some even cry before na hindi na natutuloy kasi they think about that sobrang ingrained uh, what are the usual problems bakit uh, hindi nagsesex yung couples yung married couples what are the usual ano uh, ako I could think one maybe yung guy is uh, having sex someone else ha- having someone sex else? with someone I would say classically gay or something pwede, pwede yes, din diba pwede yan pwede yan so no, no. no yes, <laughs> you're asking <laughs> the questions that, 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 that's, yeah. kasi that's sa Filipino culture uh-huh. eh, kasi diba it, it, that relates to the LGBT experience na men are Uh, baw- bawal ka gay mag-aasawa ka pero Asa. deep inside oh. ang desire niya is to be with another guy yes diba? yes so, so, syempre, so hindi ka talaga ma-arouse so, because um, you're aroused by oh, another oh, person your, your same sex oh, oh. Oh. so yun meron ganun um, there's also I say na when it comes to relationships I say that a problem in sex is not really about sex so it's a problem yeah. in the relationship communication okay. yeah. yeah relationship dynamics so not just communication pwedeng may galit ka yeah. diba may galit kayo sa isa't isa siya paano ka naman maaaraos kung galit ka dun sa mm. um, asawa mo mayroong pwedeng hindi ka na attracted dun sa asawa mo paano ka maaaraos o pwedeng hindi na talaga kayo connected yeah. um, as it is um, Uh, isa dun sa mga sinabi mo kanina na gusto mong pag-usapan is erectile dysfunction, mm-hmm. right? And that's usually like a symptom or sign of a non-consummated marriage or kaya yung a sexless marriage. And psychologically, when you talk to men who have ED or experiencing uh, difficulty in getting an erection, ang sinasabi nila is that they're emasculated. You will see that they're emasculated. Yeah. Minsan, Feeling nila mas, useless sila. Useless yeah, sila. Sa, uh, mas, dahil mas madaming pera yung asawa nila. Mas yeah. matapang yung asawa nila. Minsan, nagalit sila sa asawa nila. So, it's part of their punishment. Hmm. Hindi, hindi sila makaganti eh. Hmm. Kasi, takot ka na sa babae, di ba? Yeah. Under the saya, sabi hmm. mo. So, hindi sila makaganti eh. They'll just um, not perform unconsciously. Hindi na tumatayo yung penises nila. Or um, another consequence of that is they find power somewhere else. That's why mm-hmm. may spa. That's why yeah. they have affairs. Because mm-hmm. there sense of affirmation. Who's the man? Mm-hmm. Is this toxic masculinity or is this just a, a outdated? self identification oh, by men that, yeah exa- or it's like just a compensate exactly psychological comp- what's going on there is there okay. toxicity compensation confusion with there's confusion, changing definitely. roles of women and men society I think it depends on how yeah. the person sees it eh. right meron kasi nagsasabi na hindi parang meron sila ng tatlo na emasculated siya matapang yung asawa niya mas madaming pera ganyan right. pero ang reasoning niya is Hindi, gano'n naman talaga yung mga lalaki. Yung, ano ko nga, kaibigan ko, ganyan, di ba? Sama kami, parang niyaya ako mag-spahol. So, mm, yeah. we'll do it. Eh, gano'n, eh, gusto namin, mas bata. That's toxic masculinity. Yeah, and, and it usually happens in banter. No when men come together, right? I mean, I, I notice that, no offense to mm-hmm. yeah. my friends throughout the years, but I notice it's different like when one one I'm talking to other male friends. Mm-hmm. Pero once 
lima, you know, sampo na biglang the dynamics changes. It becomes who's the biggest man, oh, who's the real man, eh. who has the best this, who has yeah, the biggest. And, about, uh, body I count. found that toxic as a male, right? Yes. Like I'm not comfortable talking about my sexual life with my girlfriend or my would-be wife or whatever. Like mm-hmm. this is weird, but for others, apparently. They want to show off. It becomes for, for example, na lang, may, may company. It's called Models of Manila. Yun. Mm-hmm. Diba? Kasi we feature a lot of uh, exactly. beautiful models. Mm-hmm. So, merong ganong ano na parang, ano eh, parang pag may so, kakibang guy. Sabihin mo lang. Hindi, oh, pag may... Pwede pa ako doon mag model? Ha? Oo oh, 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 naman. Oo oh, naman. <laughs> Dali na pag plata. Dali na pag plata. Pero, di ba, parang may, may sense na gano'n na yung parang yung ibang guy, yung nakakaingit naman si Mark, kasama niya si ganitong models. So, merong merong gano'n. But, but do you also do it because you want to show off that you have a lot of women. How do you feel? When yeah. You yeah, it feels there. good. Like, like for flex ka. Oh, like like for flex ka. Yeah. Parang, parang so surrounded by beautiful women. I, I don't do it just to flex, pero parang it's an additional I, yeah, it's additional bonus, bonus lang, of oh. the perks of the job that I do. What are you flexing exactly? Uh, yung work ko na I work. No, no, no. When you're out there and with you're beautiful with women and all, yeah. and you're with beautiful I, I don't women, intentionally you flex. Basta I do my work lang kasama sila. Mm-hmm. Tapos the people would see it. Mm-hmm. I, I would, manager, I would post right? pictures. Yes. I would post uh-huh. ano. So the other How guys How does would, that make you feel when uh, you do that? When you do those things? Masaya, masaya, uh, masaya na, <laughs> masaya na, if, if, if some guys would feel envy, that would yeah. make me uh, a little happy inside, <laughs> <laughs> parang ganun. So, it makes you more of a man than the... Yun eh, may ganun eh, may ganun, may ganun, may ganun sense. Yeah, yeah. Yung nga, parang pag sama, tama yung sabi ni Richard, pag magkakasama yung guy, parang Ibai, pataasan ng yeah, body exactly. count. Yeah. Pataasan ng... <laughs> oh, na yun. Nakapunta lang ako dyan. Parang si Elon, tsaka si... It almost happens. Parang dick measuring contest. Oh, Patasan ng, ng ano, oh. diba? I, 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 eh, kasi nga, yun naman yung... Toxic yan for me, honestly. Yun yung, toxic. Yun yung um, gender, gender roles, oh. gender narratives that yeah. we have, diba? Na kapag lalaki ka, mas magiging lalaki ka. Alpha. Kapag mas, yeah. mad, mas madami kang nakasex o mas magaganda hmm. yung babae. Parang, ang ginagawa nyo dito kasi ay ine-equate nyo yung pagkalalaki exactly, yeah. sa kung gaano kadami kayong babaeng makukuha you sleep with you hang out with or whatever but really the question there is yun ba talaga ang yeah. worth ng pagkalalaki but, 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 hindi, hindi lang hindi lang sa dami eh. kasi kaya nga may term na trophy wife yeah, but even if even if yeah. monogamous ka pero yung asawa mo yeah. dapat the prettiest the most yeah. ano kasi nga you're competing against you're competing each other, against each other. Yeah. may ganong ano eh there is a yeah, yeah, there's a peacocking effect oh, if I yes. but but there's also this aspect that I realize even for the most supposedly confident men mm. accomplished men mm. rejection by women is a very powerful thing right oh, yes. it's a big thing like you could see the most alpha guy top athlete top in the class go up being slot I've mm. seen men I mean mm. I'm not gonna talk about myself but um, mm. I know this rejection by a woman or being left by your <laughs> girlfriend <laughs> it has a devastating effect oh hindi ko pag-usapin you know yung in-invite ng audience natin Richard you mag-open up have you been rejected? Yeah, I mean as a man of course uh, not I rejected but there are times that you Turned know down. or there are times that you feel the reciprocation is no longer there or you mm-hmm. felt you're the man and then suddenly uh, the enthusiasm is not there mm-hmm. and you're wondering it's like wait am I less attractive now what happened there weren't you chasing me the mm-hmm. other year or something like that so I notice even the most confident men including myself right how powerful affirmation by the women mm-hmm. uh, is in terms of our self-conception mm-hmm. in terms of my personal worth kasi parati natin pinag-usapan na uh, yung patriarchy yung oppression mm-hmm. but I'm not justifying it but I'm just saying that there's also the aspect of men being so dependent on, on exactly. desirability towards women for self-affirmation so it's a very dialectical process or if I can put it that way you know, it's mm-hmm. a mutually constitutive process and and minsan dun sa banters nagiging big joke rin so for instance kung iniwan ka ng girlfriend mo mm-hmm. or nireject ka ng isang magandang girl na lahat ng kilala nagiging big issue yan in the, in the crowd of men nakikita mo yan mm-hmm. oh siya ano nireject lang niya mm-hmm. yan, eh, wala yan oh ito iniwan lang sa oh, or girlfriend mahina kasi you see this becomes a big issue Meganong- so there is a peacocking effect but there's also the shaming effect right and so that's why you overcompensate there is overcompensate yeah, yeah, yeah. there is toxic rivalry yes. there is and all sorts of 
it's yeah. the whole thing because yeah. we were talking about how women are like um, put into boxes and yeah. said na parang okay it's shameful you're dirty or whatever pero syempre meron ding other side to it for men because that narrative that I need to have a lot of um, I need to have a lot of women I need to spread my seeds right yeah. I have to be attractive etc etc et not rejected uh, or not, not rejected. left behind yeah, That's yeah. All, that also puts a toll on you as men yeah, yeah. Toxic, right? yeah, toxic, they can't you, you can't even see uh, you can't even show vulnerability you can't even exactly. be weak yeah. so yun yung nangyayari pareho pareho may problema eh. problema no? it's just that correct iba yung approach like for men to approach this kind of narrative they peacock they yeah. overcompensate they become um, parang yeah, that whole toxic masculine yeah, the alpha, they, to, the whole alpha they, they, nonsense, they push yeah. themselves out right but for women they try to um, they try to approach it within first yeah. hindi from outside does that make sense yeah um, there's also the aspect uh, sorry Mark you can correct me on that I also noticed maybe mas sa atin sa Pilipinas yan, but it could be universal women are better in um, discussing among themselves mm-hmm. yung grief for instance, in divorce cases, I've noticed, mm-hmm. you know, many people... Post, we don't have divorce here. That, I know, but <laughs> the separation, right? So, of course, I'm talking about foreign people, but I've seen many people go through... Certain, the, mm-hmm. A lot of times, the, the the women come out sometimes even better psychologically, mm-hmm. but the devastation in men is strong because they, a lot of them don't want to uh, open up because mm-hmm. opening up under divorce means failure, accepting mm-hmm. failure, mm-hmm. being judged by other men. So I noticed that's also very taxing. Well, well, for for women, they seem to be stronger emotionally, open to this. Mm-hmm. They have their own focus group discussions, yes. etc. With men, it's very hard. Like, uh, there were very few times I had very emotional conversation with men who went through devastating situations. Mm-hmm. It could be divorce, it could be other mm-hmm. things, and and I noticed like years later on, there's always this gaze, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know me deep deep in my heart. You saw me in my weakest, but let's not talk about it. Mm-hmm. We have moved on, right? I can see that awkwardness. That's enough. Right? Uh, Be- because I'm a teacher, right? Mm-hmm. I'm kind of like a therapist. Mm-hmm. I-, I told you that my initial line was also in the med. Mm-hmm. So, I notice men, sometimes, pag medyo, dalawa lang kami dito sa swimming pool, oh, pare, may sabihin ako. Because they feel comfortable with me. They know I'm a man who's mm-hmm. willing to discuss and all. But I notice after that, ayaw na nilang balikan yung issue na Three years later, four years later. And there's this awkward gay. So, I I felt, even supposedly with me, that they're supposed mm-hmm. to be intellectually comfortable mm-hmm. with um, hindi pa rin nawala yung stigma of men hindi, showing hindi vulnerability. You know what so, I mean? But di ako tuloy, nagiging awkward na rin ako kasi parang, wait, like, probably the idea is just keep it to yourself or talk to other women, maybe, right? Minsan mas gusto mo kausap yung ibang babae if you went through some difficult things than other men. I think this is but not universal but many other people go through that, yeah? Yeah, I think, I know. It makes sense that you would react that way because it's it becomes very awkward for yeah. you because you're not used to men showing um, vulnerability, showing vulnerability crying in front telling, of telling you. Those, but, yeah. but the most the best that you can do there is to just be there and listen. Because um, mm. I'll tell you something. When I when I first came out publicly as a sex therapist, my clientele well, my clientele were mostly men. Mm. There were some who tried to hit on me, fine. There were also who, <laughs> the yeah, they, just, they just wanted to know, oh, who's this person? Yeah, so they pay for, a, for, they pay for a session, mm. and, and, but you would know it. Mm. I'm trained for that. So, but there were men who would really come to me crying yeah. because they don't have anyone to talk to exactly, about yeah. their problems and their relationships and their sex lives. And all they need is just someone to listen without judging them. Mm. They're rejected. Ay, yeah. hindi ka na yung penis mo. Ay, oh, you, uh, you had an affair. Hindi ka ba natatako siya? Yung ganon. Parang mm. no one judging them. And you need that. I believe that men exactly. need therapy. A lot of therapy. I have a... <laughs> I have, actually, I have a paper on it. Um, When I did an inter academic na naman but to, when I did an intersectionality approach on uh, the Filipinos um, I compared single women married women single men married men and how their sex guilt affects uh, affects them or influences them mm. and their sexual satisfaction relationship satisfaction you know who has the most sex guilt? Cool. married men yeah mm. anong, anong sex guilt? Anong, what type Higher, of uh, highest levels of Sex guilt, like guilt 
when it comes to sex. Yeah, like whenever they think about sex, uh, whenever they, they... They think they're being impure, sinful in a Catholic yes, sense. So, or dahil nag-cheat sila, or dahil... Wedding. Pwedeng Pwedeng ganon. Pwedeng because they have desires yeah. that they cannot, the one they cannot do. Explore with their their partner. Their partners. Yeah. Okay, they think of like lustful thoughts about other people or other partners. It feels like they're cheating on their and mm-hmm. their. And especially mm-hmm. now with the online all sorts of very you know toxic mm-hmm. addictions. Unfortunately, okay. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm gusto oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Ito yung napapansin ko, ah, yung difference ng old sa mm-hmm. generation yun. Yung old generation na uh, sinasabi natin na conservative. But parang yung mga uh, fi- mga wives sa panahon na yon mas open sila doon sa guy na parang mas normal sa kanila na guy will, uh, na nag-cheat or na bababae. Parang mas ano sila. Hindi. Or baka no choice sila kasi breadwinner lang yung lalaki. Yeah, parang, yeah, yeah. Parang, parang really mas their, lalaki yeah. yan. Gay, ano But yan. Now, diba, women work. So, yeah. pero ngayon, di ba, hindi role. na talaga. Yeah. Yeah. Yung diba? role kasi, di ba, as yeah. a woman, you're the homemaker, you have to take care of the kids, you have to keep the family whole. No, diba, in religion, no one can break apart whatever God, whatever yeah, God. Yes, yes. Um, oh, walang but, atin divorce. Diba? Oh, diba? Yeah. Tapos, meron pa rin yung aspect ng society, yung hiya. Anong mm-hmm. sasabihin na lang pag naghiwal yeah, kayo? Like, I mean, meron din yung mga bata? E- Oo. Meron din economic factor yon, yeah. Kasi hindi naman sila nagtatrabaho. Oh, Anong exactly. gagawin ko pag naipaghiwalay ako? Yeah. All the resources are um, with a with a male, with a, with right. a husband. So, wala. Parang trap ka yeah. talaga. Cage Pero talaga. ngayon kasi with the advent of technology and you know ngayon you know that there is there will always be someone better. Mag-up ka lang makakalap yeah. ka na ng iba. Naririnig mo na yung mga kwento nung kapitbahay mo mga kaibigan yeah. mo na naghiwalay sila and they're okay. Plus women can now work. We, ha- we can have our own money. So it's really easier to separate to be independent and have our own lives. Before kasi may trap factor. Oh, eh. Ngayon, pag eh, celebrity ka, tapos you're labeled as a cheater, yeah. doon ka na talaga. Kumaga, kasama ka pag mayroong bagong <laughs> pag mayroong bagong <laughs> cheating pag mayroong bagong cheating na issue, mabibring up na naman yung pangalan mo. Talagang unforgiving. Nagkaroon ka na ba ng scandal na gano'n? Ayun, God natin. forbid. No, I'm, I'm a very conservative man. Let's keep it that way. No, my, my thing is this, how does the digital era affect this whole uh, sexuality Uh, sexual health dynamics with all the online dating mm-hmm. and the modern love dynamics and all of that you know uh, how is it affecting us is there like kind of over sexualization of self nowadays if you can say overcompensation for rep- self repression in the past Actually, you know, did you go from 2 to 11 you know there's a, there's a whole thing before all these dating apps na tanto ako may when i was doing my sex therapy training kasi we're thinking if you want young people to not have sex you don't you don't um, talk to them you don't parang you don't tell them about uh, SEIs you don't tell them about that they can get pregnant or whatever yeah. no you, you, yeah you don't do that you know what you do you give them an iPhone <laughs> that will keep them happy that will yeah. keep them happy they don't have to go out yeah. and have sex uh-huh. and the, the data naman talaga Bumababa yung... With the lo- younger generation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, um, they really... They're yeah. not as... As social na eh. Or as yeah. sexual oh, it's as... Vicarious. Yeah, it's vicarious. Kasi like, before, wala naman talaga tayong gagawin. Wala, diba? wala naman tayong phone. We see others. Yeah, it's a we club na tayo kita. Yeah. Socialize. Yeah. Parate. That's, oh. ha- that's how we were. Um, uh, but with the dating apps and the hookup culture, nag-pick up ulit. Lalo na after the pandemic. Because people yeah. felt so... Like yeah. limited in the street. Revenge dating. Yes. Revenge dating, yes. yeah. So, do you think that the digital era is um, exacerbating, facilitating, adulterating? Or what's the dynamic here in, in the Philippine case, no? In terms of... Too sa- prong dyan, eh. Too prong dyan. It's really how you use the mm. technology, right? You but what's the net, it, net it, effect? It, net it effect, exacerbates, yeah. but mm. it just... Um, It emphasizes mm. the sexual behaviors of other people. That it happens. Now right. people can talk to each other. They they have Facebook groups. They have um, communities right. where they can talk about their first sexual experience. For example, they can ask um, advice or they can ask for you know condoms if they need one. If there's yeah. someone in the neighborhood, so mas na pag-uusapan lang siya. And because of that, there are people who have. I, I guess more agency yes. or 
nagiging mas confident sila na okay I can do this as yeah. opposed to before right sense of agency very it's, it's all it's all arrogance <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. let's have sex but it's not informed it's not um, responsible kaya ang daming nagiging problema eh, can you talk about the responsible part now let's mm-hmm. talk about the me- medical aspect of this no hindi ako medical doctor yeah but you took a certification about sexology or something I'm a, I'm a diplomate in clinical sexology I have a PhD in psychology right. and my expertise is sexual pleasure so mm. yeah so what is the but but definitely your advice <laughs> will also be about you know how to avoid the worst of, oh, the of sexual self of self course. actualization that's, that's, right um, that's part of sex right. well, like what is a healthy sexuality in the 21st century for you though I think a healthy sex a healthy sexual self is being able man or woman no regardless yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's um being comfortable with your sexual preferences, like what you want and that your desires, your sexual drive, and being able to express that um, freely without the fear of, you know, being judged. Yeah. And practicing that with utmost respect for your body mm. and respect for other people's, you know, sexual right. selves and respect for the whole society. Because mm. it means that that's also one of the problems that I'm seeing. Eh. Let's just stop tayo dun sa individual. Eh. Pero kapag individualistic lang yung lens mo, right. you're just like, oh, hey, I'm healthy sexually. What about your partner? What if right. your partner doesn't want what you want? Right. How are you going to approach that? And what you're doing, how does it affect your children, for example, right. or other people? Diba? So there's a democracy aspect. There's inclusiveness yes. aspect there. So, it's for you you start with embracing your sexual self unashamedly mm-hmm. you acknowledge that it's part of who you are right as a person and then you share it with your partner or partners if you want but with the understanding that this person the other people also have their own sexual selves that they need to respect and i think that's the beauty of sex because it, it's it's about sharing Connections, eh? sharing mm. the whole part of you with someone. You can be as vulnerable as you want to be with someone and that person too, right? And when you're in that moment, ha! Huh, yeah. Saya! <laughs> <laughs> well, diba, there's, there's that episode, bro. Diba sa Black Mirror, my episode na, no? Diba no? Yung... yung there, there are two men who use this game and everything, oh, right? I've so, seen that. Yeah, yeah. Parang, uh, va- 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 si Viper. Maki, eh. Viper. Oh, Viper. <laughs> the, the Viper one. Because the, the argument <laughs> there is yung... that male sexual is like playing a single instrument. Female sexual is like a symphony. Yeah. So what happened is one of the guys who would play this Black Mirror game, he plays the female role because he, the, the experience is far <laughs> richer. Virtual reality. Yeah. 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 And that for me, that was like, oh, that's an interesting... Uh, yeah, but there, there's so yeah. many things to learn about yourself and about other people when it comes to sex. And sex is such a such a beautiful thing where you can be vulnerable and you can be subjective and objective at the same time. With sense of agency also. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The sense of agency. And I think that's also... I think... I think it's very highfalutin. Na to, no? That's... That's what I want people to understand. Time na daw. We just want to end on the positive note. Yeah, no, that's what I want people to understand. Yeah, na it's really respecting yourself and respecting others and allowing them to embrace uh, their sexual selves. Mm-hmm. Freely and open. Do, do you have an advice on it? Uh, do you have an or? advice on Richard? No, 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 advice on someone. Well, <laughs> I, do you, I, I don't give advice. Do you have an advice? <laughs> do you have an advice for those who want to do what you want to do? Like, if a young How can student more, oh, is watching you and is like, oh, realizing, oh we have to do something that's, about. That's so perfect. Yeah, know? what's your advice? Yeah. Uh, my advice is to study. I study. Yeah. You know? <laughs> this is not po. a joke. <laughs> 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 oh, my science is at medyo mahirap kasi sex therapy is um, challenging and difficult mm. kaya hindi masyadong madami yung gumagawa nito kasi exactly. listening to people's you're, you're you're in a very know, intimate moment you're in their your, inner sanctum yeah. with, with your client you're listening yeah. to their sexual stories you have to understand what it's doing to you exactly as well too, yeah. ang dami niyang layers Correct. and 
if you want to do it, yes, please, but study. Ang dami ko kasing, ang dami nung malapit sa akin, ayaw mag-aral. So, hindi ito pwede yung vlogger. Hindi, hindi po tayo. Hindi pwede yung vlogger, vlogger lang yan. Hindi ba da, ayaw. On that note, thank you very much, Dr. Cruz, for that fantastic overview. Thank you, thank you. I know there was a kind of a whiff of awkwardness perhaps at some point. No, it's not because we find the topic awkward, it's because we're just doing it for the first time in a setting like this. I think if this were a private conversation, I would have no problem this. I would just try... You guess? Uh, you would guess on my show? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, now I feel caged. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have my legal team prepare. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, also for fantastic interventions. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I just wanted to also show you the male understanding of toxic masculinity mm -hmm. and how patriarchy is definitely really bad for women, but it also cuts against younger men, yeah, vulnerable yeah, men. Yeah. Patriarchy is really good for old rich men. I, <laughs> I think, think we're on the same way. page. We're yeah. on the same page. Yeah. I, I don't think we should you know, break the patriarchy. Well, that's a good narrative if yeah. it works for you, but I would I would say you have to understand their point of view to what, it, what it's doing to, to them. I'm a relationships therapist, exactly. so I want to see both. That's why I said that we don't want to talk about gender. It really, it, it becomes divisive if we talk about gender. It really boils down to respect how you respect yourself and other people. That's just it. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, uh, that's it. Super overtime. That I, I just, the more we talk, the more we realize we want to talk more about this. But watch out, guys. We have other episodes to discuss also other important issues, including mental health, which is a very important thing, especially sa panahon ng pandemic and post-pandemic recovery. Thank you very much again for joining us for this latest episode of Real Talk. Please subscribe to our channel on YouTube uh, and different platforms. And thank you very much again, Mark. Is there a final note of... Uh, to, watch out for to, part two. Nito. To all the women you have loved before, something like that. <laughs> I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm still learning. <laughs> thank you very much again. Real Talk.